me using the Roland wireless MIDI system to control the Alpha Juno 2 that's behind me with the Retroactive MPG50 controller that's in front of me. A little bit like magic. And to be upfront, Roland sent me these to see what I thought. And I really was really keen on looking at them actually because uh, when I'm doing these, these demonstrations on my kitchen table, I've got wires all over the place. So I have been looking for a wireless MIDI system. So since I got these, I've been using them whenever I would normally use a five pin DIN. So I put something up on Facebook, a little picture on Instagram, and I got quite a lot of comments. I really did get comments actually. <laughs> Not one of these videos where people say, oh, I got a lot of comments about this, and they didn't. I actually did. Uh, this, to see exactly how these work, how many of them you can use, what the latency is, stuff like that. So I'll go through all of that. And I'm using the Cobalt 5S as a controller keyboard. It's a really nice little controller keyboard, nice little size. And I'm using the Empress Reverb because it sounds really nice. So I'll just run through the setup I've got here and what I've did. First thing I did was download this, which is Roland's Usage Examples PDF. Hardware to Mac is really super simple because the Mac's got the BLE Bluetooth. And that means you don't need this little dongle, which is the WM1D, Wireless MIDI 1 dongle. And I'm using two sets of these. These are the WM1s, the Wireless MIDI 1. These are battery operated with triple A's. I think they last about 60 hours. I've had these in for ages actually, and they're still going strong. So you don't absolutely need this if you're using a Mac, but it does allow for high speed, low latency mode, which you can't do unless you've got one of these. So I'd suggest getting one of these anyway. I'm not tried using it on an iOS device or Windows, but with Windows, you definitely need one of these. I've tried hardware to hardware. I use this on the MPG50 to connect to this on the Juno 2, and that works. So to connect hardware to hardware without a computer, just plug one into a MIDI out of one device. You can see it's flashing red. That means it's looking for a signal. Go over to the Juno 2 and plug this one in. This one's flashing orange. It means it's looking for a high speed signal, but we'll double click it. It flashes green, which means it's now in remote mode and it's looking for a signal off another one of these connectors. And there we go, it's done. And as far as multiple connections go, the demo track of the intro used this connected from the MPG to the computer uh, directly via the Bluetooth MIDI and this one connected to the computer via the, the dongle. So you can't have more than one connected to the computer Bluetooth MIDI at times. So you couldn't use the computer to, um, to, to put four of these together, for example. It doesn't quite work that way, but it does work if you had a single, um, a single synth that you wanted to have as a host and you have all the others as remote. So you could have four of these connected. So uh, a host boutique plus three other boutiques connected to it, but not via the computer. And just to show you how I set it up for that intro demo, I use this one connected to the MPG, as I say, uh, but this one is only a MIDI out. I don't need a MIDI in on this, and I didn't plug the MIDI in just in case it was getting any MIDI loops. So plug this in, and it starts flashing red. If I want to put it into high speed mode, I hold it for a couple of seconds. And it's flashing orange. And those three flashes mean it's looking for a signal. I'll put it back into red. So it's now looking for a normal speed Bluetooth connection. So it can do that direct with the Mac. Opening up the MIDI studio on the Mac, then you can see I've had a fair amount of stuff attached to this in the past. Open the Bluetooth configuration and we can see WM1 here. Click on connect. And it's literally that simple. Connected. If I open up a MIDI monitor, wiggle something, you can see this is all coming. The system exclusive is all coming from the MPG50. I now need to connect this one into the Juno 2 and plug the dongle into the Mac. So plug that in. And that's flashing orange, which means it's looking for a low latency, high speed mode connection. So as soon as I plug this in, the synth's already turned on. We can see that's flashing three orange flashes. That's looking for a high speed connection as well. And there you go, it's found it. That simple. We need to connect the Cobalt to the Juno, and we're doing that with the dongle. So... So the Cobalt's connected, what about the MPG-50? And we need to send the signals from the MPG to the dongle as well. So come over here, and we'll go to the Bluetooth. So now we've got the MPG connected via the Bluetooth, and we've got the Cobalt connected via the dongle.
Yeah, that all works fine, but why am I using it in the high speed mode, not in the normal mode? Here I've made a little test. I've got an arpeggio running at 16ths. And here in red, I'm recording it in the sort of normal mode. In orange, it's the low latency mode. And in yellow, I've got it cabled with the standard five pin DIN. And if we just take a quick listen. You can hear that's got a slight swing to it, hasn't it? It's not perfectly aligned. If you look at these, you can actually see that there's a little bit of a gap or a bit more of a gap between some than others. Play it again. So not perfect. If you're playing pads and stuff, obviously it doesn't really matter, but go into the low latency mode. Sounds much, much tighter. And this is just to compare with a lead of the cable. Play those together. A little bit of phase they'd expect that even if they were absolutely spot on. Free running oscillators are always going to be slightly out of phase. And now let's try the same with the normal speed. <laughs> there is a difference. And if we just go and check out what that difference is, you can see here, we're getting a bit more latency, well, a lot more latency in the standard mode. So let's just take a look at what they could be. If we look at the timings up here, we've got 18 seconds, 17 25ths of a second, because this is SIMTI, so they go up to 25. So each one of these, each one of these numbers here is about 40 milliseconds, and each one of these is half a millisecond or something. Yeah, half a millisecond. So. We zoom in a little bit more. That's at 1820, 75, and 79. So that's four times 0.5 of a millisecond. So that's actually a two millisecond difference. It says three in the literature, so we're getting something similar, aren't we? Maybe the actual MIDI cable has a millisecond as well. Millisecond latency. So very, very tight there. And then let's do the same with the, uh, the one in red, which is the normal latency or the normal mode. So this is what you get if you attach it to your Mac without the dongle, 182075, and then go to there. It's about 182166. So that's just under 40 milliseconds difference. And I have to say, when people did first ask about this on the Facebook posts, uh, I, I didn't really notice any, to be honest. And that's maybe because I've been working with soft synths for years, so I'm used to a, a little bit of delay here and there. But if you do listen carefully, you can hear it, you can feel it when you play, but very, very minor. But I would suggest that you got the high speed uh, link if you're doing anything fast, like fast arpeggios or anything like that, or drums, perhaps. So all in all, I will be using these. Every time I would have used a MIDI cable to demo a synth, I will be using these from now on. They are good. They're not perfect. The timing's not perfect if it's in the, in the sort of normal latency mode, but high speed, it's pretty good. It, there are minor differences, actually. If you play those arpeggios over and over, you will hear things that are slightly out, but I won't be using a MIDI cable. I'll just be going into Logic and using the flex time and just tightening things up anyway. So as I say, we'll be using these. They are good. They're quite expensive. But if you're looking for a wireless solution, well worth checking out. Well, I hope that was of use to somebody somewhere. And if it was, please think about subscribing, ring the bell, maybe join me over on Patreon. I've got hours and hours worth of tutorials, plus samples and patch banks, things like that. But it all just helps to support the channel and helps me be able to make stuff like this. So I will see you next time.